I was honestly kind of nervous. I didn't know how long it was going to take for me to learn and adapt to all the changes made to shooting this year in NBA 2K21, but it uh, turns out I did it pretty quick. Now, disclaimer off rip, I'm shooting with the square button. You know, there's the new adjustments and the boosts you get shooting with the right stick. Mike Wang brought up a couple days ago you can use L2 to also time and aim your shot and get a boost. I haven't tested or tried those out yet. My thinking is we don't even know which jump shots are going to work because that's one thing we're going to get to later. A lot of jump shots look very different than they did last year. Jeez. Oh. Jeez. Aizen hasn't missed a shot in three games. So my thinking is, I'll find my jump shot, master the jump shot, then I'm gonna start using right stick and LT and all of that. Hey, first things first, if y'all new to the channel, you haven't already, we're dropping daily 2K21 content. Be sure to subscribe. I got my second channel link in the description. Y'all can subscribe to that too if you guys wanna see stuff outside of 2K. Um, it's late, by the way. It's like 3 a.m. What time is it? 2 a.m. right now. I just finished like playing a few games of my career. You know, I was watching some NBA on the side, so I'm feeling a little tired, all right? But I do wanna get this video out for you guys. So first of all, this video, I'm gonna give you guys a jumper I've been using and break down how to shoot because I know y'all been putting up bricks. Do you know how I know? Because when you hop on the park or the pro-am, everyone just sits and sags in the paint because they know you're not gonna make your shot. And then they come across me and they're like, how, how is this guy right here greening everything? Now, I wanna say this off rip. The fact that people could just so, man, y'all so adamantly disrespectful when it comes to me is wild. I remember in 2K17, everyone was like, oh, agent, that's a my GM player. And man, it took me about two months to break that stereotype then I became the quote-unquote best sharpshooter and then I quickly learned that it wasn't fun for me to try hard on 2k it actually made me want to break things it made me significantly more angry of a person so I just had to kick back and just do my usual funny type videos but now everyone wants to walk around pretend like I don't know how to play the game so here I go proving to everybody the first couple months of the launch of NBA 2k21 that I could sauce just about anybody all right, man, first things first. You start the game off with no badges. You have to remember that. Don't even do no right stick nothing yet. Don't think about the right stick. If you're struggling with square, you are gonna have a miserable time trying to both time and aim your shot with the right stick. Don't, don't even go there yet. The gameplay you guys are seeing is on day one of the game's launch. I had between one to three badges depending on which clip is being shown. So this is me with basically zero badges right now. And I'm consistently hitting shots. Open, catch and shoot, corner. Right now I'm trying to maximize my chances. What I'm trying to do is get shooting badges. All right, tip number one. First things first, and for some reason it's not common knowledge, although it should be because it was discovered like two 2Ks ago, is that even if you don't have a bronze, silver, gold, or Hall of Fame corner specialist in catch and shoot, you still get a very slight boost to your percentages when you catch the ball and shoot in the corner. Getting the badges gives you a way bigger boost, but even without the badges, you still get a boost. You wanna try and maximize your chances to just get your badges so you can start making more buckets, shoot in the corner, off catch and shoots. Bang. Let's go. I'm automatic with it in the corner, man. Don't overcomplicate things just yet, fellas. Wait, don't do the right stick stuff just yet. Use square to shoot the ball. I'm using square, I'll probably be using square for the first week of the game's launch, and I'll try and transition to right stick after that. The third thing, and for this, I have to go into the jump shot creator. Hey, it's pretty late right now, I just let you guys know, so I'm kinda just chill right now. Uh, it's 2 a.m. and I just finished playing hours of my career. So every 2K that drops, I get to testing jump shots. And what I usually do is I try the stuff that worked in previous years to see what's changed. Now, without having to go too far, you can just look at jump shot 11. And that looks nothing like the jump shot 11 everybody used in 2K18, 2K19, 2K20. Another popular jump shot people use was base 35. Base 35 does look pretty similar, I'd say. I don't think there's been any changes to base 35. And probably the most popular jump shot of 2K20 was jump shot 98. And it doesn't look like it did last year. It just looks awfully different. And the same goes with LaMarcus Aldridge, which has been like a staple since 2K17 or 2K18, whenever they introduced it. So I kind of bounced between a lot of these bases and then I came across the next tip is Please use my jump shot, it's incredible. I decided to combine some of the all-time greats in jump shot NBA 2K history. My base I use is Trey Burke. Oh, you could just pass it up. Bang, and I got you, you feel me? Bow. Reason I like to use Trey Burke is because it's fast. Not only is it fast, but he gets high off the ground, which means it's a little bit more challenging to contest. But not only that, the Trey Burke base has in previous years at 2K proven to have a really big green window. And you know, until the tests are done by companies like NBA 2K Lab, we won't know the official details of how big these green windows are. So for now, the safe assumption I can make is this base is solid. I tried it out. So now I have the Trey Burke base. You get high off the ground, a pretty quick jump shot. 
what do I pair that with? Now, what I did in 2K18, 2K19, and 2K20 is I just paired everything with Kyrie, and it always worked. But for some reason this year, it, Kyrie does not look the same. It doesn't look anything like it used to look, so I'm not doing that. But you know what does work and has worked since 2K17 has been some of the most popular jump shots in the game's history? Rudy Gay. So once you put everything together, I got Trey Burke base, Rudy Gay 1, Rudy Gay 2. I'm keeping the speed on quick. I'm not going very quick. And I know a lot of people are like, why, Agent? Because everybody goes very quick now. But if you guys remember correctly, in 2K17, I believe you had to be six foot four or was six foot two or under to get the very quick releases. So there was a series of 2Ks in a row that we played where unless you were a very short player, you didn't have access to the very quick jump shots. And in those years, both Trey Burke and Rudy Gay were very, very valid releases. I felt like it would throw off the cue of the jump shot if I just made it very quick. So I keep mine on quick. You can make it very quick if you want, but it might not feel the same. Ooh. Ooh, man. Get these guys off the court, man. Let's run up, get top 10 on this. Okay, so this is where I get to the shooting aspect of it because the way that I do shooting is not how most people do shooting. I'd, I'd argue that most people that play 2K are rhythm shooters. They kind of just feel, they have a feel for it. Like, this is how long I hold square. I do it like this every time. For me, my brain doesn't operate like that. What I like to do is I like to create jump shots that give me an easy cue so I know, like, when his head reaches the apex before he starts going back down on his jump, release the ball. When his toes can hit together, release the ball. When his elbow goes 90 degrees, release the ball. Every jump shot for me has to have a cue. So that way I know regardless of what's going on, as long as I'm making sure I'm paying attention to the cue, it's straight buckets. And depending on the combination you have for your jump shot, it can be either very challenging or very easy to find a cue. For me, I know personally, due to my experience, that Rudy gave cues Usually, the second he hits the apex of the jump shot, when he gets to the tippity top, boom, release the ball. That's exactly when I let go, every time. I'll say this though, Mike Wang has said, and all the devs have said so far, that the green window is smaller in NBA 2K21. It's more challenging to hit three-point shots. Man, I have myself, bro, just face to the monitor, like less than a feet away from the monitor, zoned in on my player, fully focused. I swear, I it's impossible to shoot in this game, kick back casual with your feet up. It's not possible. I have to focus like this, like I'm playing a competitive try hard match for $100,000, man. That's how small the window is this year. But when you have a good jump shot and you have a good cue, it snapped right into place for you. Hey, excuse my brown shirt, fellas. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'll blow VC on a moments video, but I don't do it for no reason, you feel me? I'm not trying to get dripped out for no reason, virtually dripped out, what's the point of that? Okay, there's a few things I wanna show you in the my court because as a sharpshooter in the game or as a person who's not a playmaker, it's very, very difficult this year to find your shot for a couple reasons. One, a build like this in previous years would have access to pro dribble moves. This year, it does not. So it's harder to find space. But on top of that, if I go to a shoot around real quick, I wanna show you guys something. Cause this was the number one way sharpshooters created their own shot in like five 2Ks in a row. But this year they decided to change it. If you do a hesitation step back like this and immediately go up for a shot, you're going up for a fade. That is no longer a standing shot, that is a moving shot now. So let me show you guys again. Do a step back, pull up for your shot, and my character just faded. That means you have to do a quick stop before you go up for your jump shot this year, or you're gonna be fading on every shot. That makes it this much more challenging to create your shot. Just on a side note, when you guys are working on your badges, get corner specialist first. And if you can, find a point guard that has dimer and floor general. It'll make your life a lot easier, man, trust me. The first four badges I upgraded on shooting were corner specialist, and then I began to split them between both range extender and catch and shoot. Until you get Hall of Fame range extender, stay at the line, every time, stay at the line. If you're shooting with square, after a few minutes of practice, turn off your jump shot meter, trust me me with all the booster given out this year for the right stick and the LTR2 or whatever they call this right here. You're gonna need the boost, man. Turn off your shot meter. It'll give you the extra boost. Plus, if you're following the rules here and you're using a cue to release the ball, you don't need that garbage shot meter this year because you're looking at your player anyway. I like how they added a couple. Hey, I'll say this, man. 2K actually added something new to the my court this year. They didn't make it bigger the way they needed to. There's probably gonna be camera issues, et cetera, et cetera. They added a couple modes here, so there's that. I want to show you guys something in this ball machine because for some reason, nobody ever thinks this through and for it always disrupts my shooting personally. Part of the reason why I prefer not to catch and shoot unless I absolutely have to. All right, I want you guys to pay attention to my shot and the way I catch the ball. Every time someone passes you the ball in NBA 2K21, there's different catching animations. And depending on the catching animation that you get, it could potentially delay your shooting animation. Right into him, bang. See, that's why I don't like catch and shoots. Right there, 
My shot started delayed. Like, it wouldn't let me start off rip, so it's up your timing. Like, if you're passing out of a shot and you catch it off like this, your character has to bring it in before your animation begins. That might throw your timing off. Remember that. That's part of the reason why I don't like to rhythm shoot. Because if I just release it the same every time, something as simple as a catch and shoot would throw me off. Just for the sake of grinding badges, catch and shoot helps, so I'll use it. But if we're playing a regular game and I don't need to, I'm not using catch and shoot. Again, with this jump shot, the second I reach the apex, I let go. The second I reach the apex, I let go. He gets to the top. I, it's literally the easiest cue as I f*** it up. I'm talking as I f*** it up. It's the easiest cue imaginable, guys. You guys can't mess it up. I think part of the frustration with shooting this year is because everyone has this tiny ass shot meter, right? And everyone is in the middle of the shot meter when you release the ball. So in your head, you're like, man, I released it perfectly. Why is it missing? Why am I going three for 22 in this park game? Even though I'm releasing these balls perfectly, shooting is broken. Mm -mm. The shot meter is tiny. So you can't even really see your margin of error. Maybe you missed by a lot, but because the shot meter is so goddamn small, you couldn't tell. But on top of that, the shot meter is like a suggestion, guys. I don't think I've ever came across a really good shooter in the last couple years of NBA 2K that actively looked at his shot meter as he shot. So if you can, just get out the habit of doing that. It's unnecessary. It'll take a while for you to just look at your player and get the hang of what you should be looking for. And it'll depend based on your jump shot. But cut that it out, y'all. That is not good for the consistency of your jump shot. I'll say this. I'm I've never been a proponent for buying boost, but if there was ever a time to buy boost, it would be now. You don't have badges on your player. You need your shooting badges to shoot well, but you can't shoot well without your shooting badges. It's like getting an interview to a job, but you need job experience to get the job, but you can't get job experience without the goddamn job. It's a cyclical pattern of doom. So relax. Relax guys, get yourself the plus five, man. It's not gonna hurt. Another thing I wanna bring up because I feel like it's more prominent this year than it was in previous years and for some reason it's never really mentioned. Where are my character is standing right now? The long two. Anywhere from like 18 feet to 22 feet away from the basket, you need range extender to hit those consistently. Range extender applies to long mid ranges and long three point shots as well. So if you are a mid range shooter, you're better off shooting 15 feet at the free throw line. Once you back up right here, you're gonna see your shot meter get visibly smaller. You will see your green window decrease dramatically if you don't have range extender. So if you have like a 60 mid range, this shot right here is a horrible shot. I wanna bring this up because uh, nobody seems to, and you know, I'm a gamer at heart, so I play plenty of different games. Yeah, when you're playing in your my court by yourself, guys, there's no latency, there's no button delay, right? This is real time. When you hop into the park, or you play prime, or you're in the rec, you're on my team, you're online with your friends, there is now going to be latency. There's gonna be delay now, because you're playing online. Account for that delay, because that delay will throw off your jump shot. And for some reason, I, I mean, I've seen people sit here and practice in their my court, and it's not gonna do nothing for you. You have to practice in the real games. I keep trying to tell people like, yo, that practice is not gonna do nothing for you because in the real game, it's gonna feel completely different. Like right now, as I'm releasing these jump shots, I'm not gonna release them the same in the actual game. I actually don't even know how to release them right now in the micro, because I've never, this is my first time in the micro, guys. I know how to release them in my career, because I've been doing that, and I know how to release them in the prime in the park, because I've been doing that. And it's gonna take repetition, guys. Just hop into like a prime with your friends, just on some chill stuff, and put up shots. You guys are going to miss, that's how it's gonna look. And people are gonna sit in the paint, because they're gonna try and bait you to shoot. Use that as an opportunity. Sit in the corner, try it. Chew it a little bit of goddamn confidence, man. And I'm honestly kind of surprised 2K went in this direction because I could see them doing something like this for the Prime, but for the park where you kind of expect more of a casual chill vibe, I'm perplexed. But hey, I'm not opposed to it. I'm the guy that keeps asking for a skills gap, man. So they're trying to provide one here in shooting. Uh, and I'ma try it, man, you know what I'm saying? But I'll say this though, in the meanwhile, as you're working on your shot, put on the jump shot, try the cue out, and just practice timing it online. But as you do that, I'd recommend creating a build that is valuable in more ways than just shooting. The lock sharp build I'm about to make in a week. Eh, eh, eh. On offense, you could be doing flat out nothing. But on defense, at least you had the lockdown, you could poke the ball loose, get some easy fast breaks, right? So that way you're not completely useless to your team. Cause me, this character right here is a pure sharpshooter. If I'm not making my shots, I am therefore completely useless to my team. Not only that, I'm actually a liability. <laughs> So there's that. So the pressure's kind of on when you have a sharp shooting build to hit your shots because that's the only thing people are expecting from you. And in the beginning of the game when so much has changed and everyone's trying to adjust, it can be difficult to do that. Try not to break too many controllers out there, fellas. It's not that complicated, guys. It's not like a million things that's different. It's just a new system. 
It's gonna take you a few days, you gotta get your badges, and then you practice some. Put on the goddamn jump shot, and you'll be hitting threes in no time. But for a moment, just calm down. Has your shooting taken a huge dip in 2K21? Yes. But if you guys remember correctly, same thing happened in 2K20. Everyone complained, and it got changed. I'm not saying people complain. I actually kinda like the system so far. What I am saying is give yourself some time. Get your badges, get some repetition. Put on the jump shot I gave you here in this video, and focus, promise you, when I'm playing these games, I'm focused like this. I'm not looking at the ball handler. I'm not looking at nothing but my player. So I know which catch animation I'm gonna get and I know how to time it. And I'm paying very close attention to the cue, which for the jump shot I showed you is when he reaches the apex of his jump shot. It's as simple as that. It's actually incredibly simple. Don't overcomplicate it. You square, take off your jump shot meter once you get the hang of it. In a few days, uh, I'm gonna probably start trying out the right stick and trying to both time and aim the shot, see how those boosts go. Mike Wang also mentioned there's a boost for using uh, L T L2. I don't exactly know how that works, but I'm gonna test that out as well, and I'm probably gonna drop a video experimenting with the different ways to shoot an NBA 2K21. If you guys wanna see that video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna leave you guys on that note though, bro, because I gotta get back to this grind. I'm hoping that by the third day, I can have all my shooting badges unlocked. I kinda have a good little system going on so far, uh, and I might drop a video on that too, because it's going pretty smoothly. Uh, but I'll catch you guys in the next one, man. I won't hold y'all and like that, man. Subscribe to the channel. Video's on the screen as we speak. I'm out. Peace.